Assessment of a casualty. Task. Train to assess a casualty during squad operations and to send a nine-line medevac request to evacuate the casualty. Standards. By the end of this film, the viewing cadets should be able to properly assess a casualty, following the proper order of evaluation, as well as send up a properly formatted nine-line medevac request in accordance with FM 4-25. Please note the training in this video will not cover treatment of injuries. However, you can find further information either in FM 4-25 or in future Fighting Irish Battalion instructional series videos. Battlefield casualties will most often be encountered immediately following contact with the enemy. While the first instinct may be to immediately treat the wounded, remember that unit security is the highest priority and must be addressed first. This means that if a fellow cadet is wounded on an objective, the aid and litter team must wait until the objective has been secured and the EPW team has cleared any enemy combatants on the site. At that time, if there are friendly casualties on the site, the squad leader will call for the aid and litter team to move in and begin treatment. If there are multiple casualties on the site, the squad leader can also call upon the secondary aid and litter at this time. Aid and litter! Aid and litter! Aid and litter. At this time, we will discuss properly assessing the casualty. For further explanation, please refer to FM 4-25.11.1.6. When the aid and litter team approaches a casualty, one member will immediately begin assessing the casualty, while the other will take out a pen and paper and begin preparing a nine-line medevac, which will be covered immediately after this. Please note that when treating a casualty, the initial rescuer must continue the evaluation and first aid measures as the tactical situation permits until another individual relieves him or her. If, during any part of the evaluation, the casualty exhibits the conditions, such as shock, for which the cadet is checking, the cadet must stop the evaluation and immediately administer first aid. The eight steps for evaluating a casualty can be remembered by the acronym RBVSFBHS. To aid in remembering this acronym, the letters can be remembered by the phrase, Really bad boys should find better habits soon. They stand for, in order of decreasing priority, responsiveness, breathing, bleeding, shock, fractures, burns, head injuries, and send for help. The first sign that the evaluating cadet should check is responsiveness. This is performed by gently tapping on the casualty's shoulder and asking, are you okay? If the casualty is conscious and responsive, he can assist in his own evaluation. If he is unresponsive, however, immediately proceed to the next step all right. Hey, Gasman. Gasman, are you right? Hey, Gasman. All right, he's not respond. He's not responding. Breathing. The evaluating cadet can check for breathing by executing the look, listen, feel technique. This is done by lowering his or her ear down to the mouth of the casualty and looking down the chest. I'm gonna check for breathing right now. The evaluator will then look for the rising and falling of the chest, listen for the sound of the casualty breathing and feel for the movement of air across the cheek. All right, I'm gonna check for bleeding. Bleeding. Checking for bleeding should be done by starting at either the top or the bottom of the casualty and proceeding down the casualty on one side, returning along the other. The procedure must then be repeated on the underside of the casualty. This can be done by taking both hands and sliding them, palms up, underneath the casualty and then withdrawing them to check for blood. Remember to withdraw them and check each time in order to properly locate the site of bleeding. Alright, I can't find any blood on him. Shock. The evaluating cadet should check for the nine recognized symptoms for shock. Sweaty or clammy skin, paleness, restlessness or nervousness, thirst, bleeding, confusion, increased rate of breathing, blue or blotchy lips, and nausea. All right, I'm gonna check for shock. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't have clammy skin. His lips don't look blue. I don't think he's got shock. All right, I'm gonna check for fractures now. Fractures. Once again, the evaluating cadet should proceed by beginning at one end of the casualty, moving down one side, and then return to the starting point along the other. He or she should be checking for the following categories of fractures. Closed and open. Closed fractures are characterized by swelling, discoloration, odd body position, or deformity. 
Open fractures can exhibit the same symptoms, but also involve the bone protruding through the skin and bleeding. The cadet can check for fractures by taking both of his hands and placing them upon the casualty for, to feel for swelling or bulges. No fractures. He doesn't have any fractures. Burns. Burns can be characterized by red, blistering, or charred skin, as well as singed clothing. The evaluator should also try to determine the origin of the burn, either by heat and flames or chemical. All right, I'm going to check for burns now. Let's see. I don't see any singed clothing. I don't smell any burning either. I don't think he has no burns. Note, if the casualty has suffered any kind of burn, do not attempt to remove the clothing from the affected area, as doing so can inflict further damage by stripping skin or tissue. All right, I'm going to check for uh, head injuries. Head injuries. Head injuries can be assessed by looking for the following signs. Unequal pupils, fluid from ears, nose, or mouth, slurred speech, confusion or dizziness, convulsions, nausea or vomiting, bruising on the head, or paralysis. All right, I don't see any bruising. I don't see any liquids coming out of his ears or nose. Send for help. When it is possible, the evaluator should have another cadet go and try to obtain further assistance, whether that be from a medic or other qualified individual. Okay, um, we're, we're done with the evaluation. Do you have everything written down? Got everything. Let's get it to the squad leader. All right, send it up. After the casualty has been fully evaluated, the aid and litter team should complete a nine-line medevac report. The nine-line medevac report is the standard request for evacuating a casualty and includes all of the information that a medevac would require to effectively treat the casualties. When sending up a nine-line medevac, the order should always be preceded by an opening statement. First, the reporting cadet will call flash, flash, flash. This will let anybody else on the channel know that an urgent report is immediately following. Then the cadet will identify his intended receiver's call sign, his own call sign, and then inform the receiver that a nine line will follow. Flash, flash, flash. Tango 1-6, this is Charlie Tree 1. Nine line to follow, over. Line 1. This is the location of the pickup site and is given in the format of an eight digit grid. Lima 1. Echo Tango 11764577. Line 2. This is the radio frequency and call sign of the reporting cadet. Lima 2. Frequency, Tree 5570. Call sign, Charlie Tree 1. Line 3. Number of patients by precedence. Alpha, urgent. Patient who should be evacuated as soon as possible and within two hours to save life, limb, or eyesight. Bravo, urgent surgical. Patients who must have far forward surgical intervention to save life and stabilize for further evacuation. Charlie. Priority. Patients who should be moved within four hours or his condition will deteriorate to such a degree that he will become urgent. Delta. Routine. Personnel whose condition is not expected to worsen significantly and who will require evacuation in the next 24 hours. Echo. Convenience. Patients for whom evacuation is a matter of medical convenience rather than necessity. Lima Tree. One Bravo, one Charlie. Line 4. Special equipment required. Alpha. None. Bravo. Hoist. Required for raising casualties where there is no sufficient location for a helicopter to land. Charlie. Extraction equipment, such as the Jaws of Life. Delta. Ventilator. Lima 4. None. Line 5, number of patients by type. Lima, litter, those who will need a litter to be moved. Alpha, ambulatory, those who can move under their own power. Lima 5, one Lima, one Alpha, break. Line 6, security at the pickup site. November, no enemy in the area. Papa, possible enemy in the area. Echo, enemy in the area. X-ray, enemy in the area Armed escort required. Lima 6. Papa. Line 7. Method of marking pickup site. Alpha. Panels. Bravo. Pyrotechnic signal. Charlie. Smoke signal. Designate with color. Delta. None. Echo. Other. Lima 7. Charlie. Green smoke. Line 8. Patient nationality and status. Alpha, U.S. military. Bravo, U.S. civilian. Charlie, non-U.S. military. Delta, 
non-U.S. civilian, Echo, EPW. Lima 8, Alpha. Line 9, Nuclear, Biological, or Chemical Conditions. November, Nuclear, Bravo, Biological, Charlie, Chemical, or None. Lima 9, None. Once the casualty has been assessed and all information has been gathered, it should be put into a nine-line report, which consists of the following. Line 1, pickup site location. Line 2, radio frequency and call sign. Line 3, number of patients by precedence. Line 4, special equipment required. Line 5, number of patients by type. Line 6, security of the pickup site. Line 7, method of marking pickup site. Line 8, patient nationality and status, and line 9, nuclear, biological, or chemical conditions. For further information, you can turn to FM 4-25 for more information on the 8th step evaluation process, FM 8-10 for the 9-line medevac process, or you can go through your normal chain of command to find out more information.